If the last 44 years have taught us anything, it's that humankind absolutely cannot get enough Star Wars, and that we will take as much of that laser sword space opera as they can make, be it in the form of movies, TV shows, video games, or Jar Jar Binks lollipops. Actually, wait, hard pass on that last one. Ugh. Back to the video games though, a medium which has given us some of the finest Star Wars experiences ever. So how come we never got to play these Star Wars games, which got cancelled before we had a chance to enjoy them? So join us now as we lament the Star Wars games you'll never get to play. Sorry. Everyone agrees that the Uncharted games are good, sure, but would be much improved if just occasionally Nathan Drake would go ham with a lightsaber and, I don't know, cut Sully in half or something. Alright, Nate, just pretend for a minute that I don't really care about any of that stuff and cut to the chase, would you? Star Wars fans came achingly close to getting their wish with Codename Project Ragtag, a game that started life in 2013 at Visceral Games, a studio best known for making the single-player, story-driven, fun-as-hell Dead Space series. Owned by publisher and then Star Wars license owner EA, Visceral brought on Amy Hennig for Project Ragtag. Hennig was the head writer and creative director of Uncharted at Naughty Dog, working on all four games, so the stage was set for a thrilling single-player adventure in the Uncharted mold, but crucially, set in Star Wars. Our goal has always been not to just sort of make a game that is set in the Star Wars universe, but to really tell an authentic Star Wars story. Ragtag was to feature a Han Solo-esque hero named Dodger, battling to pull off an audacious heist alongside a band of fellow misfits, all set between the events of A New Hope and The Empire Strikes Back. Although the game spent years in development, very little was ever seen except for glimpses of concept art, and in the summer of 2016, a delicious few seconds of early in-game footage, which showed Dodger touching a doorway as he passes through in what has somehow become video game shorthand for extremely premium single-player experience. Behind the scenes, however, things were less premium, with anonymous staff members speaking to Kotaku, later describing a turbulent production. Problems ranged from EA not letting Visceral hire the number of developers it would need to finish what was clearly going to be a big and ambitious game, to the publisher's Frostbite engine, developed by DICE for Battlefield but used across EA Studios, not playing nice in third person. Things weren't as rosy as they seemed, in other words, with one developer telling Kotaku that at the point where Dodger's hand placement was being fine-tuned for the gameplay reveal, the character couldn't shoot his gun yet. A little over a year after that early look, EA shut down Visceral Games entirely, with a statement saying that after, quote, closely tracking fundamental shifts in the marketplace, Project Ragtag's linear adventure game needed to, quote, pivot. Project Ragtag never resurfaced in any form, however, meaning our collective dreams of Uncharted in space now rest entirely with Naughty Dog, who are not responding to my emails, no matter how much free concept art I send their way. Darth Maul was one of the best things to come out of the Star Wars prequels, which is why he was hardly on screen and got killed off in the first film. Ah. Actually, and warning for deep-cut Star Wars spoilers, it was revealed in comics and the Clone Wars series that he didn't die after being cut in two. He actually got turned into this nightmare scrap heap arachnid thing. Disney, is there any way you can make this bit non-canon? I'd really appreciate it. However, Darth Maul wasn't originally just going to turn up in the Star Wars animated series, he was also going to get his own game, as reported by Game Informer in 2014. What this game was meant to be isn't exactly certain, mainly because it never got past the prototype stage where you got to swing around a dual lightsaber and cut people's heads off, which, to be fair, is the most important part. Austin-based studio Redfly initially wanted to create a stealth-based origin story with Maul and Palpatine, a prequel to the prequels, if you will. However, going by stories shared by ex-Redfly employees, things got more complicated. LucasArts let them in on Darth Maul's canonical survival, hinting that an origin story would not be on the cards. But they also failed to mention his planned appearance in Lucasfilm's Clone Wars, mainly for fear of spoilers getting leaked. All Redfly knew was that he'd need robot legs and had a supposedly green brother. 
When they were finally filled in on Darth Maul's arachnid appendages, this was obviously a shock. In the words of a former staff member, so we were going, oh god, we have to put a robotic spider body on f Darth Maul? What the hell? Yeah, Redfly, my thoughts exactly. After a lot of confusing communication and development stalling, George Lucas sat with the team. According to sources who were in the meeting, upon seeing two collectible figurines of them in the room, he said he wanted Darth Maul to befriend Darth Talon, a comic creation who was separated from Maul by 170 in-universe years. To get around this fairly big plot hole, they intended to make the Maul of this game an heir of the OG Horned Menace, so no spider legs needed. Phew! However, despite Redfly continuing to work on ideas, the game never got any legs at all. Redfly employees reported that LucasArts went radio silent for over two weeks, until eventually on the 24th of June 2011, LucasArts straight up cancelled the game. So we never got to meet Darth Maul's heir, and we had to wait for Star Wars Battlefront 2 to be able to play as Maul himself. After you earned 4,000 battle points, that is. Until November 29th, 2019, the best bits of Star Wars were the dogfights. Then, on that date, the episode of The Mandalorian where Baby Yoda sips the soup aired, and that became the new best bit of Star Wars. But the dogfights, where everyone gets in a spaceship to have a dust-up in orbit, are still good, and crucially, getting blown to smithereens in zero gravity has been a staple of Star Wars video games for decades. <laughs> So there was reason to be optimistic about Star Wars Attack Squadrons, a free-to-play in-browser multiplayer team shooter teased in 2013 with this trailer, which showed a plucky squadron of rebel pilots who have no idea what stay in formation means. Stay in formation. To be fair, that's every online team game I've ever played. Star Wars Attack Squadrons promised ship customization and 16-player dogfights in famous Star Wars locations, and delivered a closed beta test. But that beta presumably didn't go great, or at least not well enough, for publisher Disney Interactive Studios, because six months later the beta was shut down, with a message that after much consideration, development on the game had ceased. On the plus side, anyone patient enough to wait until 2020 did get the space-bound multiplayer dogfight sim of their dreams, in the form of Star Wars Squadrons which unlike the cancelled game doesn't have the word attack in the title, but does indeed feature a huge amount of attacking, don't worry. To me. Plus collectible toys and bobbleheads in your cockpit, including your best friend and mine, Baby Yoda. Sweet child, like the Mandalorian himself, I will keep you safe across the galaxy. <laughs> Mando's gonna have my ass for this. You are still haunted by visions. Yes, Master. They are the memories of a dead man. A side effect of the cloning process. Why is this happening to me? The Force Unleashed is a series in which you play Darth Vader and throw Wookiees around. Okay, okay, in truth, that's just the opening level of the first game. Although we argue that the whole series should have just been this. In actual fact, you play as character creator default Starkiller, a subtly named dark side apprentice to the famous Wheezy Space Wizard. The first game sold like hotcakes, being the fastest selling Star Wars game ever at the time, until 2015 Star Wars Battlefront finally knocked it off the top spot seven years later. However, The Force Unleashed 2 was not quite so fortunate. In November 2010, just after the game had been released to less than ecstatic reviews, the development team at LucasArts was hit with a huge number of layoffs. This is sadly not completely unusual in game studios once a project is finished, but what's more interesting is that these layoffs appeared to come from a team working on an unannounced game. This unannounced game was likely The Force Unleashed 3. Mere weeks before the release of The Force Unleashed 2, its project lead Julio Torres shared that they were working on ideas for a third game that would link the series to Episode 4, A New Hope. But sadly, dangling the idea of a third game was actually a false hope. Months prior, The Force Unleashed 3 was already rumoured to have been cancelled. Not a huge amount is known about the concept for The Force Unleashed game that we never got our hands on, but ideas have been shared by people who had worked on the previous games, including Hayden Blackman, executive producer and writer of both games. 
Both the light side and dark side endings for The Force Unleashed 2 had a to-be-continued vibe, with the light side ending of a locked-up Vader being a posited starting point for the third game. Blackman wanted a more open-world feel, with Starkiller and Darth Vader stuck on a planet together, having to reluctantly team up to escape and stop the Emperor. There was even talk of it being co-op, so if you've been dying for a co-op Star Wars game with Darth Vader in it, sorry, but it's more canned than Darth Vader's head. Any day now! One minute! Hey, toss me a detonator! Time to tilt things back in our favor. The escape pod? What are you doing? This guy's taking the express. By now, it's been a few minutes since the Project Ragtag entry in this video, and you've probably started to come to terms with the loss of a story-driven Star Wars game made in the Uncharted style. The wound is no longer so fresh. On an unrelated note, here's Star Wars 1313. Oh no, the wound. Star Wars 1313 is perhaps the most famous cancelled Star Wars game of all, and deservedly so because it has the most badass setting of any Star Wars game. Maybe any game. Catch a deep breath. It'll be the last fresh air you'll get for a while. Fresh air is overrated. Let's see how you feel about that after you get a thousand levels down. This cancelled Star Wars adventure was to take place on level 1313, a literal criminal underworld deep beneath the megacity of Coruscant. While details of the game's story are hazy, there is plenty of concept art that shows off exactly how exciting a game set in the grimy environs of level 1313 could have been, had this lost Star Wars title survived. The character of the city is oppressive, it, it, it looms, and it, it should feel like the weight of all of those other layers running all the way up to the surface is just bearing down on the player at all times. Minute to minute, the gameplay scene before 1313's untimely demise suggested a combination of platforming and cover-based shooting. <laughs> Although you probably wouldn't have been playing as this fellow, or at least not for long, as reports that began circulating after the game was cancelled suggested that the main character would have ended up being, holy crap, Boba Fett. So I guess just imagine this, but with more jetpacks and flamethrowers, if you can bear to contemplate such a thing, bearing in mind you'll never get to play it. Why? Because Disney bought Lucasfilm in October 2012, and half a year later, it shuttered the LucasArts game studio entirely. I've seen some pretty sorry excuses for transports in my time. This has got to be the saddest rust bucket I've ever set foot in. Production on 1313 was halted, robbing Star Wars fans of the opportunity to ever find out if the finished game could have lived up to its ridiculously kick-ass premise, or whether this strange creature you're escorting in the gameplay demo would turn out to be a lovable companion throughout the game. I mean, it's no BB-8, but I would probably buy a plush one? That's money left on the table, Disney. Back in the early 20 teens, you couldn't turn on your computer without your aunt, three people who never talked to you at school, and that one person you met at a party one time, all asking you to help on their virtual farm so they could get more imaginary strawberries. Farmville was a ridiculously popular daily task farm building browser game that encouraged its players to annoy the heck out of their Facebook friends by constantly sending them invites to play. Its success led to sequels, and many similar browser and mobile sim games sprang up in the years following its launch. In 2016, three years after the closure of game developer LucasArts, word got out of a shelf title that may have also wanted to jump on that bandwagon from a galaxy far, far away. Star Wars Outpost would have seen the player building up not a farm, but, you guessed it, an outpost on one of Star Wars' many planets. This was a slightly more complicated looking game than Farmville, seeming more like a traditional city builder like SimCity, or Zeus Master of Olympus, an ancient Greek city building game I was genuinely worried I'd imagined playing until I found a wiki page for it. However, one strong similarity to Farmville was getting your friends involved, and it looked like this would be a core goal of the game. One mock-up screenshot showed a quest asking you to ESTABLISH TRADE LINKS WITH YOUR FRIENDS! Along the bottom, it even displayed an example line of friends, all of whom presumably would have got a million notifications from you before going, FINE, I'LL INSTALL THE DAMN GAME! 
All I'm saying is Obi-Wan looks rightfully pissed off. That's not to say Outpost didn't have some intriguing ideas. As well as allying with friends, you would have also been able to betray them for their resources. You could also choose whether to support the Rebels or the Empire, all within a persistent shared online world. But right before the game was about to enter a public beta test, it got axed. So we never got to know for sure just how deep this game would have been, outside of a bunch of cool looking concept art. Looking at the quest rewards and talking to tipsters though, reporters found that Star Wars Outpost was apparently going to be stuffed to the gills with microtransactions. But we'll never know now, so let's just pretend it wasn't. Ah, <sighs> blissful. Ewoks are a controversial addition to the Star Wars universe, with some critics saying these furry teddy bear aliens were added to the third movie cynically just to sell toys, a theory we might buy into if we thought any child wanted a teddy bear in their room that looked like this. Ah! Nevertheless, the world did succumb to Ewok mania, so little surprise that 1983 saw an Ewok-centric video game cooked up for the Atari 2600 home console. Set to be published by Parker Brothers, that game was Star Wars Return of the Jedi Ewok Adventure. In the game, you played an Ewok attached to a glider, tasked with dropping rocks on the Imperial forces that plague the forest moon of Endor. Smashing up wobbly-legged ATST walkers, speeder bikes, and turning stormtroopers into a fine mist with your soft, rock-dropping paws of justice. The game even let you briefly take control of enemy craft, if you drifted into them at the right altitude, albeit with hilariously skittish controls, because I guess Ewoks are not good or safe drivers. The concept of altitude, however, was a problem for Parker Brothers, who felt the game's floaty, impressively animated gliding was too complicated to control. As well as steering the glider, the game asks players to push forward on the joystick to accelerate by sacrificing altitude, and seek out air thermals to stay airborne, if you don't want to see your glider flop gracelessly into the ground, forcing your Ewok to sprint back to safety. These sim-like controls seemingly became a sticking point, and the game was canned entirely, never getting a final release. A prototype has since surfaced, meaning you can play a version if you're determined, and if you get a kick out of seeing terrified pixel Ewoks legging it across Endor. Maybe this is a game for the Ewok haters then after all, if they're not all too busy giving Porgs a free pass for some reason. So those are some Star Wars games you'll never get to play. Which one are you most gutted about? Let us know in the comments down below. And maybe just like put some random ideas for video games in there as well, because we've made videos like this where we're like, oh, you'll never get to play this game again. And then suddenly it's reappeared. So we're hoping that we're magic and that this video will actually bring all these games back. That would be cool. Uh, but you know what else is magic? All of our other videos, which you should go check out. We've got some cool tabletop blades in the dark where we're crims in a spooky ghost town. And we've got lots of more or less like this. We do cool live streams, do all sorts of fun stuff on this channel. Hit that notification bell and you'll find out about all of it in future. Thanks for watching. Bye!